What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell and this is Nuggets of Truth. With each generation, the role of a father seems to dwindle more and more. The world seems to distort the role of a father. So what exactly is the role of a father? You know, when the world defines a father, they go from one extreme to the other. Either the father is only a hard disciplinarian or he's a big useless pushover. But are these really the only two roles of a father? Well, I believe that there are three main roles of a father. The first main role of a father is to lead by example. A father doesn't just say, do as I say, not as I do, and call it a day. A father leads by example. And you know, the greatest example of a father that we have is our Heavenly Father. And look what Jesus says about our Heavenly Father. John chapter 5, verse 19, it says, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, The son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, that the son does likewise. God the father led God the son by example. He didn't just tell the son what to do and go off and do something else. No, God the father leads God the son by example. Jesus watched and he learned from his heavenly father. Fathers, whether you realize it or not, your children are watching you and they're learning from you. We pick up your habits and your personalities. It's not just your sons either, but your daughters as well. I watch and I listen to my father pray. And when I pray, I try to pray like him. When I write scripts, I try to prove my beliefs the way he proves his with two or three witnesses. We, your children, are watching you, fathers. We even pick up the negative things that you do. Look what Jesus tells the Pharisees about their father. John chapter 8, verse 39 through 47. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Fathers, whether you think you are or not, whether you intend to or not, you are setting an example for your children. And a good father sets a good example for his children. The second main role of a father is to speak into his children's lives. Fathers, what you say to and about your children are important. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruits. Once you speak, you can't just take it back. Words aren't just meaningless things with no weight. Words have power. God created everything except for man and woman with just words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. What you say to and about your children, whether they hear it or not, will impact their lives. Look at the greats of the Bible. They spoke into their children's lives. They blessed them. A good father blesses his children. He speaks good things into their lives. The blessing of a father is so important that Esau, a grown man, with a wife fell at his father's feet weeping and pleading for a blessing when his brother Jacob took the blessing that came with the birthright he sold to him many years ago. Genesis 27 verse 38 it says Esau said to his father have you but one blessing my father bless me even me also O my father and Esau lifted up his voice 
and wept. When Jacob saw that his life was coming to an end and Joseph had brought to him his two sons, look what Jacob's response was. Genesis 48 verse 9, Joseph said to his father, They are my sons whom God has given me here. And he said, Bring them to me, please, that I may bless them. Jacob made sure to bless not only his children, but his children's children, his grandchildren. A good father blesses his children and his grandchildren. Now, the third main role of a father is to pray for his children. Job was a man of prayer. He interceded for his children. Even though they were fully grown with their own families and homes, he got up early in the morning, and he interceded on behalf of his children. Job chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them. He would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Job covered his children. He prayed for them continuously. He didn't just pray for them once and then call it a day. He didn't just pray for them once and call it a lifetime. Could this confidence in his prayer life for his children be why he had such peace and acceptance when they died? Because he knew that the Lord is a God who answers prayers. He understood that the Lord wouldn't just overlook his prayers for his children. Could this be why Job had such such peace? Now, now look at Abraham. Abraham's firstborn was Ishmael. Now, look at the one time it's recorded that Abraham intercedes on behalf of his son, Ishmael. Genesis chapter 17, verse 18 through 21. And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you, at this time next year. We never see Abraham lift Ishmael up again before God. In fact, Ishmael and his descendants didn't serve the Lord, they served idols. What might have happened to Ishmael and his descendants if Abraham had just prayed for him like Job did for his children? It's not just a mother's prayers that counts. It's a father's prayers that counts also. Getting up early to pray for your children, that the Lord might be with them, that they might love the Lord and follow him, is is a big, big part of being a father. Just living by example and speaking good things over their lives is not enough. Abraham had circumcised Ishmael, which was like dedicating him to God. Yet he still had to pray that he might follow the Lord. This is the only time that that we even see Abraham pray for Ishmael. And Ishmael's descendants didn't follow God. They weren't living in peace. What might have happened to Ishmael and his descendants if Abraham had just prayed for him? If Abraham had just taken the time to lift his name up before the Lord as Job did for his children. How often do you lift up your children before the Lord? How often do you lift up your grandchildren before the Lord? A good father prays for his children daily. He lifts their name before the Lord every morning and every night. He intercedes on his children's behalf regardless of their age or where they're located. So just to sum everything up for you guys, a father is more than just a figurehead or a disciplinarian. A father is the head of the household. He leads by example. He doesn't just say do this and do that, but do the complete opposite. He leads by example. He lives the godly life he wants his children to live. 
A good father blesses his children. He speaks life over his children. He speaks good things into his children's lives. A good father prays for his children and his grandchildren all the days of his life. He prays for their soul, for their lives, for their actions. He prays that they might grow into men and women of God. He prays that they will love the Lord and follow him all the days of their lives. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and then it maybe shed some light on three of the most important roles of a father. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.